I will start from a few basic concepts about archaeological excavation. Um, one, the first one we already um, heard about, archaeologists are well aware that archaeological excavation is destructive. This is undeniably true, and it exposes the paradox represented by the need to destroy the very object of study, namely the archaeological deposit, by excavating, dismantling, and removing it in order to understand it. The excavation entails a transformative act, a complex deconstruction of a material sequence of deposits, cuts and structures, and its transformation into a group of new material and immaterial elements, including debris, thoughts, discussions, notes, forms, drawings, photographs, labels, finds and samples, plastic bags and crates. The practice of archaeology also incorporates large interpretative and subjective components. And interpretation mostly happens, as Ian Oder notably wrote, at the trowel's edge. While cutting through the deposits with their trowels, as a matter of fact, archaeologists constantly ask themselves questions trying to understand what they see, the soil particles that are encountered, the physical relationship between two contexts, the origin of a discoloration, the reason for an alignment or a gap. It is a complex craft which includes a creative aspect. While excavating, the archaeologists create, as it were, the contexts selecting and shaping discontinuities from an otherwise blurred soil continuum, according to their experience, knowledge, physical condition, eyesight, color vision, mental disposition, time constraints, weather, illumination, and so on. Finally, archeological practice in Egypt, in particular, can also be unbalanced not just for the excision of the Egyptian workforce from narratives of archaeological fieldwork, as addressed in this comic by Egyptian cartoonist Nasser Jr., produced for the Egypt's Dispersed Heritage Project, but also for the uneven degree of accessibility to new technologies. The only remedy against the intrinsic destructive nature of the excavation is to carefully document the work and to collect as much data as possible, both before and during the dismantling of the archaeological deposits. For this reason, archaeology has always been keen to adopt new methods, tools, and technologies that could help with the documentation process. Certainly more keen than with the borrowing of new theoretical approaches from a cognate discipline like cultural anthropology. So much so that the first experimentations with information technology in archaeology were already done in the late 1950s. The first computers were used for statistical or quantitative analysis on the artifacts, then for approach management and processing of the data in spreadsheets and databases. The use of digital cameras became increasingly common, and then GIS technologies allowed to combine excavation data with special information and analysis tools. At the same time, surveying techniques were also revolutionized by the introduction of total stations and laser, laser scanners. It has been a quick and steady revolution, and if in 2014, Matt Edgeworth, researching the impact of digital technologies within the frame of his ethnography of archaeology, could still write that the excavation hadn't still be touched by this revolution. This is no longer the case now. The 3D surveying technique of digital photogrammetry, for instance, 
has proven extremely valuable to archaeologists due to a good balance between accuracy and precision of the measurements on one side and affordability of the system on the other, especially in comparison with laser scanning. This kind of documentation is the most efficient and reliable way to record an archaeological context. And here you see for instance, members of the Polytechnic of Milan team in action on the Dutch-Italian excavation in Saqqara, taking photos of context from different angles and measuring the position of the markers with the total station. This 3D documentation replaced the traditional single context and general plan drawings, speeding up the digging and recording operations enormously. And saving time is always welcome when the expedition operates in a foreign country under the pressure of a tight schedule and a limited budget. After the photos and survey on site and the processing, georeferencing, creation of the mesh, texturing off site, we get a photorealistic model of the surveyed area, including, as in this example, a number of different contexts among which a drainage installation. These are traditional photos of the same drainage installation, but in the digital model of the contest, we can go back to the on-site situation, look at the drainage system from any different angle, and take measurements that we might have forgot to take during the excavation, um, as you see here. In the model, we can also inspect any structure and take levels in any point of the surveyed surface. And with this model of an area of about 12 by 8 meters, we can also produce a zenithal view of all the structures without having to take an aerial photo. So that's all very amazing. But what is it? Uh, the impact of these new technologies on archaeological fieldwork. A few issues need to be considered, as the time needed for 3D survey on site is much shorter now than uh, the one needed for traditional drawings. The typical rhythm of the excavation is accelerated, which in turn produces the need for more frequent surveying sessions, and this if on one side allows for a more complete documentation of the different stages of the excavation, on the other though, it results in a huge accumulation of gigabytes of images and in the consequent expansion of time needed off-site to the process the data and produce the 3D models. Besides, the 3D surveyed context may appear as the real and faithful representation of the context captured on the excavation and readily available in a time and place different from those of the excavation for infinite and objective analysis and interpretations. It is an illusion of objective reality though, as it captures only what was excavated and cleaned in that precise moment in the way it was excavated and cleaned. So what we have in the end is the recording of a finite number of discrete moments of the excavation, which is still amazing as far as we don't think to have an objective image of the archeological deposit. The downside to this technology is also the loss of the interpretative phase typical of the production of traditional archeological drawings, which are no longer done on site in many expeditions for the sake of time saving. Archaeological illustration is by no means a simple documentation of the context. As William Carrer put it, and I quote, it is the product of an explicitly interpretive process and it reinforces careful observation and decision making while excavating. So it's extremely important. The digital process is shifting the interpretation from the trench to the laptop in our office, where the physical encounter with the materiality of the stratigraphy is no longer possible, though. 
Finally, in our experience, the use of the software that produces the 3D models of the archaeological context remains limited to only a few of the team members, those who have specific knowledge and familiarity with the software, and those provided of a laptop with specific characteristics. This reduces the accessibility to the 3D documentation of the excavation, and it means that to exchange data between team members and to communicate them to the local authorities or to other scholars, we still need to create digital uh, CAD uh, drawings. So if you want more traditional kind of plans and sections, digitizing the orthophotos coming from the 3D models, which remain extremely helpful in preliminary reports, final publications or similar outputs, and of course absolutely necessary in case of paper publications. Here an example of a multi-phase plan from the museum fieldwork in Saqqara. The Polytechnic of Milan the team also created a DTM, digital terrain model, of the entire archaeological area so that the detailed models of the excavated sector and of single tombs could be inserted within the modern landscape of the area. You probably already thought now how helpful all these might be also for the creation of archaeological contents in the museum aimed to university students or the general public. And that's precisely what we did in 2019 uh, for the exhibition that was already mentioned, Invisible Archaeology, here at the museum. Thanks to the 3D data from the excavation and the creative work of Riccardo Antonino and the team of Robin Studio, we prepared the video that you see explaining how digital photogrammetry works and how it's used on the excavation, but also offering a short tour of the excavation area and basic concepts of archaeological stratigraphy. Another example of the use of digital technologies for archaeology in the museum is offered by a new project on which the Museo Egizio, the Politecnico of Turin, and the Politecnico of Milan are currently working. The so-called uh, temporary title, preliminary title, Virtual K project. The application has been developed by Giovanni Pachera and as is MA dissertation under the supervision of uh, Professor Fabrizio Lamberti. It is the attempt to recreate the archaeological context of the tomb of Ha in the site of the Remedina on the west bank of Luxor. Here a 3D model of a sector of the necropolis, including the funerary chapel of Ha and the underground chambers of the tomb can be explored also in virtual reality. 3D models of the objects originally found in the tomb and now in the collection of the Museo Egizio can be arranged in the burial chamber and additional contents visualized by the user. An amazing tool for researchers and curators and for the general public as well. But we still have to consider that a photogrammetric survey of the context, however precise and realistic, it's an image of the present state of the context, and as such, incorporating all the changes, modifications, and additions occurred since the early 20th century excavations. Modifications and changes that we have also to add to those already occurred in the thousand of years time span, separating the ancient deposition of the objects in the burial during the funerals from the discovery of the tomb in 1906. Moreover, the eye level of detail of the 3D model needs to interact with the fragmentary nature of archive documentation. Most times we simply cannot reconstruct the original layout of the objects in a tomb because of the lack of information. And what normally happens in museum displays is that we have a mixture of reconstructed contexts based on documentation and contexts just recreated collecting one single burial assemblage 
in a showcase. So without the original position of the objects. So in conclusion, regarding the digital applications to archeological uh, context in the museum, two aspects um, I think we should consider are the, the risk of going too far towards the gamification of the experience to the expense of scientific soundness and of finding ourselves also in an impossible competition with video game companies. And second, the risk of creating a hybrid between the incomplete data retrieved from the excavation or the archive, the reconstructions originating from our interpretation, those based on parallels, and all this combined with a 3D model of a modern landscape, which was deeply modified by time, human activities, natural elements, and archaeology, and without clearly expressing the hybrid nature of the final outcome to the public. So I would also add, after the, the previous uh, talks, to these two points, another point, which is uh, that we absolutely need to consider, which is the absence of the human element from, from this kind of reconstructions, uh, which is something that we should uh, address. Thank you very much. <laughs>